Hey everyone, this is Erica Sable. Welcome to another episode of My Bit. Hey everyone, this is Erica. With me today is my boyfriend Bradley. Hey Bradley, Hello. you're back. So I'm gonna be doing, or we're gonna be doing, a monthly pickups. We both got a lot of stuff this month, so instead of taking Brad's credit, <laughs> we are gonna do this one together. So hope you enjoy. So Bradley, how about you start with your, um, your picks or your pickups of the month? Okay, uh, long time Akira fan. I read the whole. Uh, the whole series years and years and years ago. I used to borrow it from a friend and over maybe what Probably like five years now. I've been trying to collect all of them and I just managed to finally get volume five Which is it's, a, it's one of the original Dark Horse releases as well And the guy at the store who I bought it from was also very kind enough to let me exchange my volume six It used to be um, Kadanja. Yeah, Kadanja comics. So he let me trade that one in for the Dark Horse one So that means I have all six volumes that are Dark Horse publication, which, you know, makes the set complete. Absolutely. I'm really happy that we finally have this because it's such a good series. If you haven't read, if you haven't seen Akira, you gotta see it, but if you haven't read it, you definitely need to read it. I'd say read it before you watch the movie. Personally. Also, if you're gonna watch it dubbed, try and get the 80s version. It has, like, the same voices as the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon. Yeah. It's pretty funny. It's worth watching at least once, so. Absolutely. Cool. All right, so I guess we're we're gonna tag team yeah. on this next one, um, but this is a really really great manga series by uh, Satomu Nihei. Uh, if you're not familiar with Satone, to, to, bleh, Satomu Nihei, his name's really hard to say. I know. Um, he did Blam. He's he's actually done a lot of cyberpunk sci-fi kind of thrillers, but very minimalist. Blam was by far the most minimalist. He did Noise as well. Noise I was think. the first one, but I've never been able to actually find. Yeah, a copy that of one's it. really hard to find. But he did another one. Um, called Biomega, which definitely had a lot more dialogue in it, but it's all like set in a very like dismal future. It's it's actually really creepy and all, very unsettling. All of his series though tend to take place in the same universe. They just mm -hmm. take place thousands upon thousands of years apart, which is really neat. And this is the latest one. Erica brought home the first volume the other day. Knights of Sidonia. The friend on Twitter um, who I will list below actually mentioned this and I had no idea that um, that Nihei came out with, with so the I got series. Three and four as well. So I got one and two, and you liked it so much, you got three and four. So, yeah, uh, yeah definitely want to keep going with this and see how this all pans out. I'm up to volume two now, and it's just really great. Another really dismal one, but it's a nice mix between dialogue, and it's actually a little bit humorous too, which isn't something Nihei's really done before. Yeah. It's not totally serious, but it still has some very dark things. It's pretty bleak. Very bleak, yeah. very bleak. Um, and then lastly, I want to say I got Attack on Titan, which should be no surprise. Uh, you know, the, the last episode of the season is going to be coming out this weekend. Exciting stuff, really. It's kind of sad, though, too. Don't know if there's going to be a season two. I heard of an OVA. I also found a really weird chibi cartoon this morning that I'll have to show you. I, I heard you watching it. It was really funny. It sounded like the same voice actors, and they were just poking fun at the characters' archetypes. So uh, this is number seven. Um, I'm really excited to see where this goes, because this is still going to be coming out monthly. Kodansha, when they realized how popular the series won, they... Ooh. went they were just like yeah like let's just go monthly instead of buy so. speaking of that they're also already turning this into an anime as well are they really yeah oh, okay cool well there you go <laughs> so uh i didn't grab saga yet i was supposed to grab that yesterday i'll just put that in the next uh monthly pickups and yeah in terms of books that's that so next up uh brad's going to talk to you about some toys he got and um something that i forgot to mention last month so uh, first off is one of the uh, Spawn anime series. Uh, it's uh, oh, I forget her name, Major Matoko. Matoko. Yeah, sorry, I always Come forget on. it. I know the other are guys' names me? like Batu and all that. I was just waiting there. I'm like, are you kidding? I just couldn't think of it. Me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Looks really cool though. Um, I've had it for a couple weeks now, and Erica made sure I didn't take it out of the package so we could do this video with it in the package. But as soon as this is done, I'm going to rip it apart and put it together and put it um, in one of our shelves you know with how all long of our other toys. The package, though? Yeah, this is actually a really old series. This is from like 2001, I, feel I believe. Like we should keep it it's pretty cool. I'm also looking, hoping to find the Akira stuff. That'd be really neat to get Canada in the bike, but oh, man, they're worth probably a pretty penny now. But there's Armitage there too. Yeah. 
Yeah, I know if, if this is another um, anime film and series that if you haven't checked it out, Ghost in the Shell is a must. I haven't checked out Arise, Isn't the, the new series. New, yeah, the new series just started. Uh, Arise, yeah. yeah. I haven't checked any of that out, but we do. We did like standalone complex. Yeah, same, it was really cool. Ghost in the Shell 1 and 2, great. But yeah, I mean, it's gorgeous. It's just beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful Very feeling. cool. She's a very cool character as well. And then, at the same comic book store, really cheap, I got, I'm a huge old school Star Trek fan, so it's a Klingon Bird of Prey. It's one of the Hot Wheels die cast toys, uh, they did a whole line of these. It's uh, metal, got the posable, uh, I don't know, battle wings, I, guess, I forget what they're called. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> My Klingon's really bad. Uh, but they're pretty, it's pretty cool, it's nice and metal, it's a, you know. I like Star it's Trek, so cool. it's cool. I like it. Yeah. It looks like a weird plant thing. And then, at Fan Expo, uh, big fan of Pure Ownage. It's a uh, Toronto local guys. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, check it out YouTube. I think it's all on YouTube now. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is FPS Doug. If you don't know him, uh, it's all of his famous catchphrases. My favorite being. Oh wait, yeah. that one's good Not too. Not that though. one. Wait, which one is it? Oh, there we go. I thought that the headshot one was gonna be the one that in the matter. middle of the crosshairs. But he's. And then. Counter Strike? Yeah. What? I forgot that was all the and same. And then there's one. also. Sometimes I think maybe I want to join the army. I mean, it's basically like FPS, except better graphics. I guess so. Oh, no. <laughs> So, yeah, that's pretty cool. It's pretty fun. It's um, pretty crazy in the show. Definitely check out the show if you haven't seen it. It's pure Onage, and Onage is spelled with a P instead of an O. If you're an old school <laughs> FPS player like myself, you'll know why. So, yeah, that's it for that kind of stuff, I guess. Cool. So, next up, we're going to talk about the different games that we picked up. So, we'll start with the newest to the oldest. So, earlier in the month, I ended up grabbing Code of Princess on the 3DS, a nice little brawler if you haven't heard of it, and it's full of sexy ladies. I was going to say. And really cool high. artwork, too. I think it's the same artwork as... it. Look, the cover art looks like it's from 999. Um, but then the art on the back looks different, so I'm not really sure. It Maybe Atlas, there are multiple yeah. artists, but it is a really, really cool Atlas game. Definitely worth checking out if you want to yeah, look at that. that <laughs> and then I also picked up Nostalgia, um, a really great traditional turn-based JRPG. I'm really surprised that I found it actually at V Games, but it seems like one of those games that just has been lingering around there for a while, and I was lucky enough to pick it up. So. Those are really cool ones, and then I finally grabbed a copy of Nier. A lot of people have been talking about this game. I know we had it at the game store for a yeah. while, but we couldn't play it because there's too much swearing. Yeah, the, the intro, she starts swearing right away. Yeah, she starts it's a cool like game, though. I, got, I played through, I think, uh, like the tutorial and probably a little bit of the first level. Really neat, really dark, uh, and it was a nice change from stuff like uh, Final Fantasy. Which, Very unconventional. Yeah. Uh, Final Fantasy isn't always like that. It's not always traditional. It breaks its mold, but this really breaks its mold, definitely. It's very does. dark too, that's what I like about yeah, it. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to try this out um, and really put some time into it. So, those were my games. Uh, I just picked up Killzone Mercenaries. I'm doing a review on it for uh, the Future Shop Tech Blog, so check that out. I'm sure if you just Google Future Shop Tech Blog, you'll find it. Uh, mm -hmm. I love my PS Vita. It's a shame that Sony kind of, you know, they always make like the weird adapters and the weird memory cards that I'll never probably use again, but the Vita is such a nice looking system and this is probably hands down the best first person shooter I've ever played on a handheld. And like, it's always just been a problem with controls and stuff. The touch interface they put in is so much fun when you like melee kill guys, you gotta swipe the screen and you'll like knife a guy right in the head or something. It's pretty cool. It's lots of fun, and the uh, 4v4 multiplayer online is absolutely seamless. Really good, looks great, plays really well. I like my sci-fi shooters, what can I say? Awesome. Okay, so next up we're going to cover some retro games that we got this month. Brad, you want okay, to start things off? With when a I was a kid, uh, a kid down the street had one of these, and it always made me so jealous. But, I mean, I grew up with a Nintendo, and when I was a little bit older, I bought myself a Sega Genesis. And I love those consoles very much, but this was one of the most ones that, like, Growing up, I just could never find and never or never had the money to buy it, so I finally got one. Turbo Graphics, what? Woo! Booyah! Oh, finally! So and it's quite awesome. It's very cool. Uh, we do like our shmups, so I mean, you know, it's full of those. So I got this controller, you know, all the cords you need and stuff like that, and then I got some games for it as well. So I'll show you those. 
Boom. Yeah, really happy we finally have one of those. So of course I got Keith Courage and Alpha Zone. That was the standard really North cool. American packing for all Turbo Graphics. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Really um, fun game. It's actually surprisingly really fun. Uh, and it play. looks great too. By yeah, the way. surprisingly, yeah. It looks great. Even and the animations, is... and it wasn't clunky or anything. And of course, it's complete. It's got the manual and the card inside and stuff, so that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Uh, I also picked up uh, Bloody Wolf. It's supposed to be another very good Turbo Graphics game. It's kind of like Turbo Graphics' response to uh, Contra, mm -hmm. except it's like a kind of top-down view. It's really cool. You get lots of weapons. You throw grenades and stuff. It's it's pretty hard as well. Yeah. Uh, but the turbo graphics kind of helps out. Uh, the standard controllers do have a turbo on off switch, so that's pretty cool. Once again, this one's complete as well. It's got the card, the manual, all that kind of stuff. Nice. Uh, and then I just got one loose game because it's uh, originally released on the Master System, I believe. Uh, or it, it was in arcade as well, but Fantasy mm -hmm. Zone is like one of the most bizarre shooters you'll ever play. Really cool, plays really well. It's really quick, but it's really colorful. If, if you don't know what it is, just look up a YouTube video and you'll just, you still won't know what it is probably afterwards, but <laughs> it's really cool, lots of fun. Uh, I was looking at a bunch of loose cards at one video game store, AMC Games, yeah. they're all Japanese, and to get a PC engine at this point, I'm not too sure. They, they do sell like mm -hmm. adapters, but the adapters are worth more than the consoles themselves, and mm -hmm. it's, we'll see, hopefully I can get a cheap PC engine somewhere, that'd be pretty cool. That'd be really cool. Because there's tons of amazing Japanese oh, games yes. on Turbo Graphics. We need to get our type as well for the graphics. Yeah, that's not cheap things. though, we'll see. No, it's not cheap, but, but it's not too pricey. That's it for retro stuff for me. That was pretty good. So, for me, I got uh, a lot of random stuff here. So, Brad helped me get this game. I've been wanting for a while. I um, was talking about it after I posted my retro review for the Guardian Legend. Yeah, this looks really which cool. Which is a really cool, like, space shooter hybrid. Um, and this is another one of those, uh, Zexies, I believe that's how you pronounce it. You can pronounce it however you want, though. <laughs> I don't know, it's X-E-X-Y-Z, so take your pick. Um, just another cool hybrid. I like hybrids. I think it's a really cool idea, and I wish more games did it. You still have it, you know, here and there. Um, like Thunderblade, I know, did it as well, too. Well, newer games, too, you could even say games like uh, No More Heroes. Yeah, yeah, but I, I, I mean like in space shooters, oh, though, you don't kind of really stuff? see oh, it. Oh. You know, this one's like a platformer space shooter. I like that idea a lot, whereas for the Guardian Legend, it was more like a top-down Zelda-esque game if you didn't check out that review, along with like a vertical shooter. Um, aside from that, I also got another hybrid, actually, of that same sort of deal. That's Sigma Star. I really would have loved to get this game in box. I love to get my games in box, but a friend recommended this to me and reminded me about how long I was looking for this game. But yeah, if you're looking for um, another hybrid space shooter type game, Sigma Star is a great option on the Game Boy Advance. So there's that. There you go, Bradley. <laughs> no! Oh my god, that would be so awful. I'd hate you forever. Like, you chucked it out the window. Oh my See ya. god. <laughs> that would be really awful. Um, another game I got was Baton Kaidos. I played this a long time ago with my friend um, Nick at his place. We used to play a bunch of GameCube games. I never grew up with a GameCube. But I got to relish them there. Same with like Skies of Arcadia and Paper Mario, Thousand Year Door, and all those wonderful games are in Symphonia as well. But Van Chaos is a really, really interesting one. It's a really bizarre JRPG, really just beautiful environments. And it's just so rich with color. The, I thought the voice acting was kind of clunky and it sounded a little bit weird. And I remember we used to make fun of the voices so much, but it's a very unusual concept and, Two discs. Ooh, and a very cool game though really cool idea I, I love it and i'm happy to finally have it in my collection you almost got me origins that didn't happen oh you that's got, okay you i got, got sexies zex, zex, so. whatever <laughs> whatever whatever no that's okay though eventually i'll get that too uh, i also got another um another game called uh, astonishia story or however you're supposed mm -hmm. to pronounce it that's another jrpg um that uh, was published by Ubisoft so uh, that was a long time ago yeah. obviously that didn't really go anywhere for them um, and it's gotten some mixed reviews but it's a game that you don't find very often in terms of JRPGs um, and it's it's one that I've been wanting to add to my collection the 
the art is by far the highlight of it all. I, I love the character design. I think it's really gorgeous. On the back here it says, uh, intuitive one button control system. <laughs> hmm. Sounds awesome. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't sound, doesn't make it sound very yeah. good, does it? But I'm really happy to have it. I was actually really surprised to find it. So there you go with that. Um, and then my friend, uh, I just gave him a bunch of my old CDs. My friend Tyson, who helped me film the Legend of Zelda um, Symphony of the Goddesses video I did earlier. He just gave me his copy of Spyro. Uh, I love this game. I bet it's going to seem really empty now and just like, yeah. what the hell am I playing? Oddly enough, I have played through <laughs> the entirety of that game. I used to babysit some kids and they had it. And when they'd go to sleep, I'd just sit and play Spiral because it was the coolest game they had. Yeah, when I lived in, um, in Col I think it was in Colorado, I played this in Montgomery Wards. If any of you remember that department store, I don't think it's around anymore, but I used to play it in the home section. And then I just, yeah, I just... I didn't get a PlayStation until like later. I didn't play PlayStation games until I got my PS2. But I, um, yeah, I mean, it's fun. It's a good game. It's a classic, right? So I'm glad you got that for me. Thanks, Tyson. All right, we got one more pickup for you. So, Brad? So there's a little bit of a story to go with this. Yes. Um, we started playing Magic maybe, what, two years ago now? Two years. We played for about a year and had a really good time playing. Mm -hmm. Played with a lot of our friends. There's a local bar around here that also does tournaments and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. we always had a good time, but um, over time, it just got the people we played with got more and more serious about it. And mm -hmm. it, you know, the, it's a, it's a great game. The mechanics are really cool, but we just don't really have the time or the money to invest in it to play in standard tournaments and keep going with it. So I mean, we do have a huge, huge amount of cards now, mm -hmm. and we still play. Wonderful. We still play with our friends casually. You know, have a few beers and play some magic. It's still fun, but uh, collector card games are just not kind of for our lifestyle. Just because we're so busy and just you, you know, it's quite expensive. So we buy things. a lot of stuff, right? So I looked into another card game. It's made by the same guy, but he had to change some stuff because apparently, uh, what was it, Wizards of the Coast at the time? Mm -hmm. I think they owned the rights to the mechanic tap. So when you tap your mana and stuff like that, you can't have that in any other game. So uh, in the 90s, he made this, and it was recently uh, republished or redistributed by, uh, what is it, Fantasy Flight Games. They did the Android board game, and this is the Android Netrunner. It's really cool. So as opposed to a collectible card game where they're constantly releasing new cards and you buy boosters and you don't know what you're going to get in that booster. This is a living card game. So every couple of months they will release an expansion, but when you go out and you buy that expansion, if I buy one box and Erica buys one box and you watching buy one box, we all get the exact same cards in that box. So this is the starter right here. Uh, Unlike Magic, you're not just two warring people who can do whatever you want. One person plays as the corporation, one person plays as the hackers. It's very, very cool game. Really neat. Uh, if you look it up on YouTube, fun, uh, Fantasy Flight, they do a whole tutorial series on it. Really cool. It's, it's animated really well. There's like that robotic woman's voice, yeah, which is really cool. Like right over really cool. Johnny Mnemonic or something. Yeah. Very, very cool. I love my cyberpunk stuff, if you can't tell already. <laughs> uh, so definitely pick this up. This comes with three hacker decks. Uh, a, a bunch of neutral cards, which you can use in any hacker deck as well, and it also comes with four corporate decks. So, I mean, the starter box is all you need to get going. Uh, there are add-ons. Oh yeah, they've already come out with a series of add-ons as well, which are more decks for hackers and corporations and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So, definitely very cool, definitely very, check it out. Looking forward to playing more of this. It's really, really cool. Comes with everything you need right here. It's a good price. I think I paid 40 bucks for it, so you can't go wrong. And what's nice about this is I don't need to go out and buy boosters to be tournament legal or anything like that. Yeah. So And it's got a great reception as well. Yeah. Like there's tournaments for this game and it's just it's really cool. It's just mm -hmm. a really cool concept. It's it's awesome. I don't know. I like the whole living card game though. Yeah. That, that that's that is pretty that's cool. way more up my alley right now. So <laughs> sweet. Cool. Awesome. Alright, so thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed. Please let us know what your pickups were for this month, whether you want to do it in the comments below or in a video response. Hope you enjoyed, and if you have any questions or whatever, feel free to ask, or if you have any questions for Bradley here. Yeah, of course. Everyone. <laughs> Everybody wants to know what I'm doing. Who are you? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed, and have a good one. Alright, peace. Yeah!